Okay, so uh, the last session for today, and it's my pleasure to introduce Camilla, who will just tell us something about the controversy between Daniel Bernoulli and, and D'Alembert on smallpox inoculation. Please, Camilla. Okay, uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, that the um, summary of this talk for a few words on the problem of smallpox and the debate over inoculation in the mid 18th century. Then I will cover uh, Bernoulli's, Daniel Bernoulli's proposal and uh, D'Alembert's objections to it. And um, at the end, um, I will outline shortly the relevance of the argument of both authors for uh, the problem of uh, handling uncertainty and quantitative analysis of uncertainty in moral decision making. Uh, so an um, overview of what I call the decision context. In the uh, um, mid 18th century, in highly populated cities like London or Paris, it was estimated that 10% of deaths were due to smallpox. And there were no known treatments against this disease, and so it was regarded as a symbol of the failure of medicine. Um, in 1780, Lady Montague, the wife of the British ambassador in the Ottoman Empire, uh, introduced in England an inoculation technique. This practice was very rough and risky, as many patients died in a few weeks and became infected, and they contributed to the spread of epidemics. So that's the reason why in France this practice didn't take root and was considered with suspect and skepticism as a desperate expedient. But between 1750 and 1770, the debate over inoculation spread, as for the French philosophers, it turned into a crusade against obscurantism. I think that this quotation from Voltaire, who suffered in San for smallpox, perfectly illustrates the mood of the time. Continental Europeans considered that the English were fools and madmen. Fools because they gave smallpox to their children to prevent them from having smallpox. Madmen because they want to infect those children with a certain and unpleasant disease to prevent an uncertain evil. Um, so it was a very urgent and dramatic question. Uh, we'll now focus on these two guys, Daniel Bernoulli and Jean d'Alembert, who confronted in a very enthusiastic querelle. My proposal is that we can outline uh, their uh, different proposals as two ways of building and solving a decision problem. So um, that's the decision problem. A Parisian around um, 1750 has a probability of 1-8 to get smallpox and has a quite high risk of dying because of inoculation. Uh, so we have the question of uh, uh, Daniel Bernoulli, which I call a social perspective. Is it rational for the state to promote inoculation for all individuals at birth? And we have uh, the... Um, Question proposed by D'Alembert, which I call an individual perspective. Is it rational for a single individual to inoculate? Uh, so uh, Bernoulli's ways to uh, solve the uh, decision-making problem is to build a mathematical model. Uh, to do so, he makes very clear the assumption he makes, which he knows, yeah? Conditional on getting the pox in the first bullet, what is my probability of surviving it? Okay, um, that's uh, are in the simplifying hypothesis, so it's... Uh, you die. What? So what are you assuming, that you die if you no, get it? No, 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 of course. Uh, we have a probability Q of... Uh, um, uh, we have a probability uh, P of die uh, if you get the smallpox and you survive with probability 1 minus P. Ah. And <laughs> this probability it was almost 1 8. So 1 8 times 1 8. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we are already in simplifying hypothesis. Um, he know, uh, Bernoulli knows they are uh, based on, uh, they are grounded on lacking data and uh, the um, technical, um, yeah, well, and the um, inoculation and smallpox itself were not fully known from a physical point of view. So that was the main problem and that's the uncertainty in dealing with this problem. Uh, so, uh, the simplifying hypothesis are a force that people infected with smallpox for the first time, that with probability P and survive with probability 1 minus P, independent of age. This is, of course, a big approximation. 
that everybody has probability Q of being infected each year and um, so uh, in the infinitesimal time period, the X, um, the probability of becoming infected is Q dx. And the people surviving from smallpox are immunized and uh, the, if we put M of X, the mortality at age X, due to other causes, the smallpox, uh, then our probability uh, to die in the infinitesimal time period, uh, DX, is MX DX. Um, so uh, the um, um, Bernoulli's argument is then organized as follows. He builds a populational model. Um, mathematically, a curve which describes the mortality rate. And the key move in uh, uh, this operation is the isolation of the mortality due to smallpox from the overall mortality. Uh, then he calculates the variation of um, the life expectancy if smallpox were eradicated. Mathematically, it is a comparison between two integrals, and eventually it takes into account the evaluation, uh, the risk of death after inoculation. And uh, now we'll cover very, very quickly uh, the mathematical and technical details of uh, Bernoulli's model. Uh, so, um, from a group P0, people born the same year, he uh, divided the world population in the group S of X, the number of susceptible uh, individuals the number R of X of the immunes who have survived from smallpox, and of course, P of X is the sum of the uh, groups. Of course, if X is equal to zero, we have the following values. And um, then it computes uh, the variation of the number of susceptible individuals, and um, writing this differential equation anyway, um, he computes also uh, the number of the um, immunes and with this uh, uh, second differential equation and adding equation one and two, we get the variation of the whole population in the infinitesimal time period, the X. And um, from equation one and two, it could show uh, the diffraction of people who are still susceptible at its age X uh, was uh, um, this equation four. So with formula four, uh, the values on, of P of X, Bernoulli can compute the number S of X of uh, susceptible people, uh, the number of immune, and the number of deaths due to smallpox, which uh, um, for the sake of simplicity is uh, between age X and age X plus one. Uh, which should be this integral. Uh, Bernoulli uses an approximate formula, which is the area of the trapezoid instead of the area under uh, the curve. Uh, yeah? Are the people susceptible? And, uh, immune. Um, uh, because it only computes the variation. So um, um, the differential equation is always between uh, after a uh, time dx. So uh, people are, have died or have survived, and so they count as immune. And, um, of course, now Bernoulli has a um, suitable mathematical model, but uh, the problem is that this model has to be filled with uh, some data. And was the, that was the crucial problem, as uh, the um, data collecting methods and the records of the time was uh, uh, very inaccurate. And I won't go uh, through the techniques used to estimate these uh, uh, data, which was not uh, it was uh, indirect. Uh, but um, just put here uh, this reminder um, to put in that. Um, Bernoulli is aware that uh, data collecting methods are imprecise and that our knowledge of uh, smallpox inoculation uh, are very rough and superficial. Uh, so um, now Bernoulli can compare what he calls two states of humankind. One, uh, when uh, smallpox is inoculated to everybody at birth, its inoculation is safe, and so smallpox is uh, eradicated, we are all very about this, and uh, um, we he calls uh, uh, P star of X uh, population uh, age X when smallpox has disappeared. He uh, writes these equations, and last one compares uh, P of X with P X, where P X is the population when smallpox is still present. 
so um, this from a mathematical point of view means to um, estimate the variation of life expectancy, uh, these two integrals or the two trapezoids. And so we have um, life expectancy with smallpox that is uh, 26.57 years and life expectancy without smallpox. Uh, so uh, he notices that inoculation would increase our uh, life expectancy by more than three years. But the problem is that inoculation was not completely safe at all. And so he estimates this probability of uh, uh, dying just after inoculation, which hopefully is uh, less than the probability of dying because of natural smallpox. And so this is the life expectancy if everybody went to inoculation as bore and uh, life expectancy remains higher uh, if and only if uh, this following inequality holds and that is uh, the p is less than 11% again p couldn't be estimated directly but um, it, is, it was much lower than this so Bernoulli concludes that inoculation should be promoted by the state he concludes that uh, this quotation, I simply wish that in a matter which so closely concerns the well-being of the human race, no decision shall be made without all the knowledge with little analysis and calculation can provide. So um, let's turn to um, D'Alembert's uh, criticism to this uh, model. I will deal mainly with uh, two uh, arguments. This is what I call the individual versus social perspective. Uh, this different account of the decision problem leads D'Alembert to criticize uh, the um, uh, rational decision criterion used by uh, Bernoulli, that is the uh, maximization of life expectancy. Uh, according to D'Alembert, this is a rational criterion for the state, but not for a single individual. And the uh, um, second argument is the quantitative analysis of uncertainty itself. The two authors give different, different answers to the question, is it possible to apply uh, probability to the problem of inoculation? My conclusion would be to outline a different approach to uncertainty and to the other methods to deal with it in moral decision making. So, the uh, first argument can be easily summarized with this thought experiment proposed by D'Alembert. Uh, suppose there's a lottery L in which all citizens are required to participate. This lottery assigns with probability one death, immediate death, with probability one half a lifespan of uh, 100 years. And D'Alembert um, says that uh, even if uh, the expected um, utility, the expected average lifetime uh, of the lottery is higher than uh, the average lifetime, um, he doubts that anyone would voluntarily participate in such a lottery. And even, uh, um, of course, this lottery is convenient for the state as it would increase the number of useful citizens for uh, the state, but, um, D'Alembert says that it would be wrong for the state to sacrifice an individual to increase the average life expectancy. Um, so uh, the maximization of uh, uh, life expectancy is uh, a, convenient, a rational decision criterion for the state, but not for uh, the individual. Yeah? This is assuming that the quality of life is constant throughout the life of, a, of an individual. That's another uh, main argument of uh, D'Alembert. Uh, he divides um, our life in odd ways. He thinks that uh, there are portions of our life in which are useful to the state, a part in um, which uh, we are not useful anymore, but we can enjoy our life, and uh, there's a part of our life we actually is the same. We don't live at all, uh, but uh, I won't focus on uh, this argument. But of course, this was another criticism of uh, D'Alembert. Um, so, um, why um, this criterion fails to take into account the psychology of risk taking, according to D'Alembert? 
um, because uh, um, it doesn't take into account uh, what he calls uh, the moral experience of uh, uh, making uh, risky decisions. How are we to compare the present risk to a known remote advantage about this analysis of Hazard can teach us nothing? I think this lottery argument is um, interesting because the uh, lottery case is traditionally uh, regarded as a standard argument for the introduction of uh, risk aversion parameter in the individual utility function. But um, I think that D'Alembert's point here is uh, more subtle and radical. Uh, it's worth noticing that Keynes uh, points out that D'Alembert was pretty much alone in criticizing mathematical expectation as a reasonable decision criterion in everyday life. Um, uh, this um, skepticism seems to concern, as Keynes points out here, I won't uh, read the, the whole uh, quotation, uh, this uh, skepticism seems also to involve a more complex um, way to uh, calculate uh, the mathematical expectation, like introducing a risk aversion parameter. We can see here, but if doubts as to the sufficiency of the conception of mathematical expectation be sustained, it is not likely that the solution will lie, as D'Alembert suggests, in the discovery of some more complicated function of probability where we compound the proposed good. So um, I've, um, I think that uh, this criticism uh, involves, uh, uh, more, uh, accounts for a more, uh, more um, general objection uh, to uh, the possibility of applying quantitative analysis uh, um, uh, to moral decision itself. And this criticism is grounded on um, different uh, perspective um, of uh, D'Alembert as on the application of probability. Here uh, is uh, what I call D'Alembert's first proposal uh, of uh, the um, quantitative analysis of uncertainty. Uh, in uh, uh, the Eclarisman, uh, another um, work by D'Alembert, he divided it into uh, three fields of application of probability. The first is the one of gambling. Uh, here, uh, the application of probability is grounded on known and given principles. Then we have a co uh, question concerning everyday life, human lifespan, annuities, naval insurance, and here we have inoculation. Uh, experience and observation here only fix the number of cases, and we know proportion only approximately. But mathematical analysis is still applicable, as uncertainty only concerns principle and not consequences. And then we have uh, science like physics, history, medicine, and law, which are highly complex matters uh, where it's impossible to achieve demonstration, but probability is nevertheless necessary. So D'Alembert seems here to claim for a different degree of certainty in the, conclusion, uh, of, uh, in the conclusions of probabilistic analysis, which seems to depend on the inner nature of the problem itself, or what we can call uh, the state space of the problem. Um, but um, in his uh, um, querel against uh, uh, Bernoulli, this intuition is taken to the extreme, as D'Alembert comes up with a, a totally skeptical and disruptful attitude towards the uh, quantitative analysis of uncertainty. Of course, this conclusion is inconsistent with uh, the uh, free fields account or his uh, first proposal because uh, he said, I don't believe it necessary, as he did, to build grand calculation upon, upon vague hypotheses in a matter concerning human life. Uh, so, um, this uh, um, totally uh, distrustful and pessimistic attitude is grounded on these uh, um, features that Lambert observes. There's a gap between moral experience and probabilistic analysis. There's a gap between the sure methods of computing lifetime um, and, uh, the, uh, and uh, sorry, the effects and operating principle of smallpox and inoculation, which were not fully explained and established at the time. And of course, there's the problem of incomplete and inaccurate uh, data. Oh, um, well, this was, will be the last part of my talk. I call it pessimistic because 
um, D'Alembert thinks that even if uh, we have some information, if uh, this, inf um, this information are inaccurate or insufficient, we shouldn't uh, give indication or say, uh, yes, we should promote inoculation. While Bernoulli thinks that uh, if we have some information, we should at least take into account the information we have. So I think that's a different uh, um, approach to handling uncertainty. But it will be the last part of my talk. Uh, I will give reason, I hope. <laughs> um, so um, the very last part of um, this talk, I um, will uh, um, outline uh, the relevance of the uh, perspective of the, these two authors on the problem of handling uncertainty in moral decision making. As, of course, the issue is very uh, extensive and uh, interesting to me, um, I think um, I will uh, simply point out that um, there are uh, two um, different approach, uh, to approaches uh, to um, the problem of quantitative analysis of uncertainty. And, um, I would propose that uh, these different approaches um, can be, uh, have to be evaluated uh, on the basis of the ethical principles which uh, grounds and justify them. Uh, so um, this is what I call the first approach. I've put a quotation always for Keynes. I won't have time to um, read the, the quotation, but I think that here there are some good reasons uh, to come up uh, with um, uh, this thoughtful attitude towards the possibility of uh, uh, quantitative analysis of uncertainty. In moral decision making, it seems that um, every, um, every problem is something like a unique event and the psychological features involved seems to prevent us from a quantitative and probabilistic analysis. Uh, so it is tempting to uh, come up uh, with, uh, to change our mind as D'Alembert did uh, in respect to the possibility of applying uh, probabilistic analysis. Um, but in the case of smallpox inoculation, the problem is, if possible, even uh, more delicate. As uh, uh, here, our uh, decision involves our uh, ad others' individuals. Uh, for example, we have to say uh, if we want to promote inoculation for other individuals at birth. And so another question seems to arise. The question is whether it is legitimate to give uh, indications on the basis of the lacking and inaccurate data uh, we have. D'Alembert doesn't think so uh, because of uh, a um, um, rule of uh, prudence and caution. Uh, it is worse to cause R by action, inoculation, that by inaction, do not sacrifice a certain present good, life, in the hope of a larger, uncertain future good, immunity. So, um, but that's not the whole story, as uh, Bernoulli suggests a different approach uh, to uh, the problem. I think that uh, this quotation for, from Nice uh, illustrates Bernoulli's starting point. It goes without saying that rational conduct strives to reduce to a minimum the uncertainties. Uh, so uh, in everyday life, Knight argues, we are always in the position of lacking information and ignorance. Um, but we as human, Knight argues, uh, strive uh, to reduce, uh, to increase our explicative and predictive power and to reduce uncertainty. Nice also illustrate how we do so, given that we can't get rid of uncertainty and we have, to, uh, we have to deal with it, otherwise we couldn't live at all. And these methods are acquiring new information, organizing a social structure and building models. Uh, I think that there's a crucial methods as is exactly what Bernoulli did. And so uh, building methods, uh, building models uh, involves making assumptions, stipulating, uh, stipulating uniformities and variances, and abstracting from the features which make a problem an isolating event. To put it in night words, it means reducing uncertainty to risk, 
or uh, if you remember a uh, fourth proposal by D'Alembert reducing the uh, third field of uh, complete ignorance to the second field, which is uh, the one of risk, of course. Um, I think that um, different ethical position grounds and justify um, Bernoulli's account, which can be summarized as follows. It is impossible not to choose what I call here the moral equivalence of action and omission. Uh, probabilistic analysis selects a more reasonable alternative. And, and once uh, we know that, we have the responsibility at least to take this result into account. Um, so both positions are um, at least defensible, and it can be argued that our preference for one of them is grounded uh, in uh, our feeling or moral insight. So um, the last thing, I just want to put in a good word uh, in favor of uh, uh, Bernoulli's uh, um, optimistic attitude towards the possibility of uh, um, dealing, uh, reducing uncertainty, and uh, um, in favor of his uh, uh, claim that it is uh, uh, rational for a reasonable man to uh, promote uh, uh, inoculation. Um, I think that uh, Bernoulli's position is grounded in what uh, uh, Carnap calls the total evidence principle and Keynes calls uh, the Bernoulli's maxim. This is a quite simple, very simple rule. In reckoning a probability, we must take into account all the information we have. And, uh, um, <laughs> uh, so I think that um, a reasonable and not only moral argument in favor of Bernoulli's argument, uh, of Bernoulli's position, but of course maybe that's a question of feeling, so that's all. Camilla, other questions? I think that a very controversial aspect of the debate between the two, I think is also how should we consider the well-being of present generations against the well-being of future generations? Because if I, if I remember well, smallpox is something you get infected from the other people. So if we, I mean, if we uh, inoculate the people today, okay, suppose that half of them die, okay, but then the, the other half will never die and will never infect the others. So we arrived to some point, and did we arrived in history, to the point where, I mean, this has been eradicated, right? So I don't know if you took it into account in your, in the computation of life expectancy, also the fact that, I mean, if you inoculate people, there is less risk for the others who are, who are not inoculated to get the infection. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, basically, uh, if uh, you read the uh, literature of the time, there was um, com confusion about uh, this matter. And that's why I propose to divide a social perspective from an individual perspective. Of course, uh, from a social point of view, uh, your um, argument is well grounded. And, uh, but uh, it still remains uh, D'Alembert's objection. The problem is how are we to compare uh, the life of present generation uh, in respect with the life of future generations. And uh, that's why I think this uh, I don't, do not have a solution and nobody has one, uh, but um, I think that's why this problem is um, very interesting because also uh, for um, question concerning um, climate change or so on, you have this, exactly the same problem. Why we have to sacrifice for the future generation? That's a problem that remains open, of course. And just if there is time, uh, do the two, I mean, do D'Alembert and Bernoulli at the time, what were they doing in terms of activities? Uh, well, uh, Bernoulli, um, no, no, uh, D'Alembert exactly. Uh, I think that uh, Bernoulli 
and ja uh, just wrote uh, about the St. Peterburg's paradox. So uh, the problem of mathematical expectation was crucial. And that's why I think that D'Alembert's objection is very subtle. And, and D'Alembert, what was he doing? Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, 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 it was just... No. just <laughs> Sorry, maybe I was a bit blunt, but I think that... Yeah. <laughs> he was involved in the encyclopedia. No, no, right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just by the name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but maybe you have a more precise answer. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> okay, so let's thank Camilla again.